Aloha and welcome to our Word of Life radio program here in wonderful Okinawa, Japan. We give glory to the Lord of the harvest. There's a harvest blessing here for you tonight. Father, thank you so much, my God, on, for the theme that we have in the beginning of this year, Dream Big. And Lord, this morning we lift up our senior pastors, Pastors Art and Pastor Kuna. May your hand continue to rest mightily upon them to protect them during this ministry travel. Lord, they truly are a ministry gift to the body of Christ. And we pray, my God, for supernatural wisdom, provision, favor, and blessing to be continually poured out richly upon their lives. Thank you, my God, for times of refreshing also over them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, how many of you were able to join us for prayer week starting this morning? Let me see your hands. 5.30 early this morning, whether it be the other campuses or here. Let me see again. All right. We're going to work on that this morning. Praise God. Uh, my wife and I, my son, we came to a prayer this morning. And what I usually do when I come on property is I put my stuff upstairs and I go through the admin building straight into the sanctuary but I left my key at home. So I had my stuff and I got to the door and I had no access. So I had to put it back in the car and I had to go around the admin building just like everybody else. And I had to wait for the volunteer to let me in through the door because I did not have my own key. Now, as a staff member, of course, I have that wonderful privilege. I have access to all our facilities, but because I did not have it with me, I could not gain access to the facility. Right? Well, today, this morning, we're going to talk about effective prayer. Say effective prayer. Effective prayer gives us access to the promises that God says rightfully belongs to each and every one of us. Sometimes because we don't have access, we have to go the long way around and it takes a little bit longer to get to where we are wanting to be. And we can't enter into certain areas where we want to enter into because perhaps we need to develop effectiveness in prayer. 2016 is the year of the redeemed. And the Spirit of God has challenged us, son, daughter, dream big, and dream big we shall. How many of you believe that? Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man, the, the things that God has prepared and made ready for those who love him. So your eye has not yet seen, your ear has not yet heard God's absolute best for you in 2016. Amen? We know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can dare ask or think. So God is getting ready to exceed your expectation for this year if you would continue to incubate the promises that he said rightfully belongs to you. Say, this is my year. Listen, according to the word, there is hope for your situation. No matter what challenges you may be contending with, God has a turnaround that's been prepared and made ready just for you. Say amen. amen. For those of you that are facing overwhelming challenges, whatever they may be, sometimes in order for you to get back on your feet, you must first get down on your knees and pray. Because many times prayer is the last thing on our list. We exhaust all our resources, all of our efforts, and then I don't know what else to do, Pastor. Maybe you can pray for me. Because they've exhausted everything 
that they could possibly come up with in their mind. But what if we put prayer first? So we're talking about effective prayer this morning. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10, the Bible says that God declares the end from the beginning. What, are, what have you been declaring over your 2016? What have you been declaring over this year for you personally? Because many times people have their New Year's resolution. How many of you have that? Right? Like oh, this year, you know, I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to eat healthier. I'm going to get my finances together. Whatever it may be, you have a particular goal that you are shooting for. But sometimes, come mid-January, some people lose steam because of discouragement, and they give up, pick up their foot off of the gas pedal, and they say, well, I'm just going to go ahead and try next year. They were believing God for that special someone. They're believing, God, I pray that this would be my year, that I would find that good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. But because they have not met them yet come mid-January, well, I guess I'll have to wait the following year. <laughs> Say, this is my year. my year. Amen. So the Bible says we're to be imitators of God, and that's what God does. God speaks of the non-existent things, the things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. That's called the language of faith. So be mindful of how you are speaking over your life, over your circumstances, over your situation on a regular basis. We've got to take upon a new mindset. One thing I want to encourage you is all throughout this year, rather than have having one New Year's resolution that you're shooting for by the end of this year, break it down to 12 things. So every month, by the end of January, this is what I'm believing for. I'd like to be at this place by the end of this month. Then for the month of February, this is what I'm believing for. And I go, so on, so forth, all the way to the end of December that way there's always a reset and a fresh start and you don't lose momentum and traction and you don't allow yourself to get discouraged well, first you've got to identify what are those things that you're believing God for so take upon a new mindset a no quit mentality that will stop at nothing until you obtain the promise this is the year of the re redeemed and we will accept no defeat so if you're believing for healing, then stand on the promises of God. Stand on the promises of God. Jonathan said it earlier, locate it in the word of God. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, he himself, Jesus, took our infirmities. Isaiah chapter 53, Jesus took upon our transgressions. He was bruised for our transgressions, and by his stripes we were healed. Psalm 107, verse 20, God sent forth his word to heal the if you're standing you believe in god for a financial turnaround then you've got to stand upon the promises of god's word my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in christ jesus galatians chapter 3 the bible says those who are in christ are abraham's seed how many of you have received jesus into your heart you are abraham's seed and the bible says that you share in the blessing that Abraham received. What blessing did Abraham receive? God spoke to him. He says, I will bless you and I will make your name great. You will be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you. Those who are in Christ share in that promise. We are an heir together with Christ. So these are promises that we ought to be standing on, declaring, believing, speaking it over our lives. Amen? Listen, prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance, but laying hold of His willingness to intervene and to bless you. Because many people, they have a difficult time with that. They think, well, maybe God doesn't want me 
to break through. Maybe God doesn't want me to be healed. Maybe God doesn't want me to have financial turnaround. But in all reality, God desires your breakthrough more than you ever will. Because it brings glory to his name. Amen? <clears throat> Next thing I would like for you to understand is don't be oblivious to the opposition. Don't be oblivious to the op opposition. Daniel experienced this firsthand. You must also know that in every promise that the Lord has given you, there is an enemy who comes to see, steal, kill, and destroy. He does not want this promise to materialize in your life. And let's look at the life of Daniel. Turn with me to the book of Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. And I'll read this beginning with verse 12. An angel of the Lord spoke to Daniel saying, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day, say the first day, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come because of your words. But the prince of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princesses, came to help me. For I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. In the New Living Translation, it says this. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before God, your request has been heard in heaven. And I have come in answer to your prayer. So Daniel was praying for his breakthrough, praying for the people of the children of Israel. And it took 21 days before he received an answer. But the angel of the Lord said, Daniel, from the very moment, from the first day that you set your heart to pray and seek God, your request was heard in the realm of the spirit. But the prince of Persia resisted me 21 days. And if you read the previous chapter, Daniel was praying and fasting for 21 days. He was praying and fasting for 21 days. And finally, there was breakthrough. And the angel of the Lord came as an answer to his prayer. Amen. Amen. If we're going to obtain our breakthrough in 2016, we're going to have to learn how to persevere in prayer. Some of you are believing, believing so big. Your dream is so big. It's like level 10 on the Richter scale. Praise God. Because that's what we want. We want to dream big. But your prayer life never goes beyond level one on the Richter scale. So you're believing God for big things, but your prayer life has been reduced to a simple mention while you're eating your food. <laughs> right? Father, I believe God that I will find the good thing. In Jesus' name, thank you for this food. Amen. Wow, you sure are going to get your breakthrough because the devil does not want you to find that good thing, <laughs> whatever it may be. Financial breakthrough, your physical healing, we're going to have to learn how to persevere in prayer. Say amen. amen. If breakthroughs and blessings were automatic, then there would be no need for the believer to pray. Now, this is what it says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, say anything. anything. Say anything. anything. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we have asked of him. Kenneth Hagin Sr. says this, faith begins where the will of God is known. 
You cannot even begin to say you are walking by faith if you don't even know where it is written. You're going off of secondhand revelation of what this person said or what so-and-so said, but you have not even personally made an effort to locate the promise of God that belongs to you. So we're going to persevere in prayer. We're going to have to understand there's over 8,000 promises in the Bible. Find one. I'm pretty sure you opened that Bible, you already found one. All you got to do is open the Bible. Praise God. Say amen. amen. <laughs> when your prayers are in perfect alignment to his will, it will not return void because you are praying his word. But in order to be effective in prayer, you must know what God's word says about your particular situation. I like what Smith Wigglesworth says, a great revivalist, a mighty evangelist. He says, I'm not moved by what, by what I see. I'm not even moved by what I feel in my physical body. I'm only moved by what I believe. This person, he only read the Bible. He wouldn't even allow magazines or newspapers to come into his house when people would come and visit him. Only the Bible. It's no wonder he developed such a conviction and a confidence in the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit operating through his life. He even went on to say, if you come to my meeting and you remain the same, that I am not God's channel. That is a man of faith. So in other words, whatever challenges that you are facing, you come bring it to the altar and there will be a turnaround because I know how to grab hold of the God in whom nothing is impossible. Come on, can somebody give Jesus a mighty hand clap? We serve a great God, amen? Turn with me to the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. We're going Old Testament on you guys and we'll have you released for the Pro Bowl, so you can go ahead and prepare that luncheon that you've been meaning to have. First Kings chapter 18. Here God speaks to the prophet, the man of God, Elijah, and he says, Go to Ahab, for I will send the rain. There's been a drought for three and a half years, and now after three and a half years, God instructs the man of God, now I want you to go to the king and tell him, rain is coming. Rain is coming. And at that point, the prophet Elijah, he challenged all the prophets of Jezebel, called down fire from heaven, a mighty prophet of the Lord. But you know, in James chapter 5, verse 16, 17, 18, the Bible says, Elijah was just like us with emotions and feelings. But yet when he prayed, there was breakthrough. In other words, he wasn't exempt from what he felt. He wasn't exempt from what he saw. He's just like us, but he was moved by what he believed. And if the Lord said he's going to bring rain, that settled it for him. And I want to show you this right now. Isaiah, I mean, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up and eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. Now, when he said that, there was no rain. It was completely dry. He was declaring the end from the very beginning. He says, go make preparations. There is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. And said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And seven times he said, go again. Now look at this. Elijah is praying. He's praying for the rain to come. And he says, go check if the rain's there. His servant comes back, there's no rain. He sends him out seven times. Can you imagine that? 
You're believing God. You're praying. And he was persevering through prayer. He was fully persuaded that what God has spoken into his life was going to come to pass. We've got to come to that place. You've got to have such an intimate relationship with God that when he drops a word in your heart, there's just no second guessing it. It will happen. It is inevitable. It will not return void. So the seventh time, the servant came back and he says, there is a cloud the size of a fist. Then he goes on, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. God brought about heavy rain. God wants to bring heavy rain upon your land that will produce increase in your life. But you've got to persevere in prayer. You've got to go beyond prayer mentions during your lunch break. Amen? And the perfect time to do it is this week. We have started our prayer week. Every day right here in this sanctuary from 5.30 in the morning to 7 a.m. up until Saturday. Get in an atmosphere of the miraculous. Sometimes you need, you need a jump start. Okay, I want to take my prayer life to a whole other level, but where do I begin? Well, get around people that know how to pray effectively. And I'd like to close with Colossians chapter 4. This is something that I would like for you to Personally pray over yourself. Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of yourselves, a servant of Christ Jesus, sends you greetings. He is always striving for you earnestly in his prayers, pleading that you may, as persons of ripe character and clear conviction, stand firm and mature in spiritual growth, Convinced and fully assured in everything willed by God. Five key areas that you can pray over yourself. Number one, that you would be a person of ripe character. Because the Bible says, Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, faith worketh by love. We don't want to have a, ripe a, a rotten character. So you can't appropriate your faith if you're not walking in love. Number two, we need to have a clear conviction. Not a fuzzy conviction. In other words, you don't know what your target is. You don't know what you stand for. But when you know it is God's will to heal my physical body, then there's just no other option. But some people say, well, if it's God's will... He will heal me. Well, obviously, you do not have a clear conviction because Jesus paid a terrible price for you to be set free from every sickness and every disease. It belongs rightfully to you. All you need is the key to unlock the promise that God has already given you. Thirdly, it's going up on the screen, is standing firm. You don't want to be a double-minded person because a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. So you've got to stand firm. You've got to develop a root system regarding the belief that you have created in your heart. We choose to live by faith, walk by faith and not by sight. Number four is that we would be spiritually mature in growth. Mature in spiritual growth. Unfortunately, there are many believers who've been attending church for 30 years but are still one year old in their spiritual maturity because they've never taken the time to dig in for the word for themselves. They like to be spoon-fed one spoon at a time. Jesus! <laughs> number five. What's number five? Convinced and fully assured in everything willed by God. Fully persuaded. That's what Abraham was. 
He said he did not consider his own body, although he was already a hundred years old. But yet God gave him a promise, you shall have a son. He did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. But he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. He was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. Pray these five things over your life. And you would develop an effectiveness in prayer. Amen? And I'll close out with this statement right here. To desire breakthrough in your life. And at the same time, neglect a personal discipline in prayer and devotion. Is to wish for one thing, but walk in the complete opposite direction. Did you hear what I just said? I'm going to say it again. To desire breakthrough or this particular dream or vision that you're believing God for, but yet you neglect your prayer life, your devotional life, is to wish for one thing, but you walk in the completely opposite direction. Because that Richter scale level 10 dream will not be accomplished with mentioned kind of prayers. So you can either downgrade that dream, which none of us want to do, or you can up your game in your prayer life. Amen? You all got something from this morning? Amen. Uh, let's go ahead and stand to our feet. So again, prayer is key. We want to be effective in prayer. There's a difference between praying a prayer and actually praying. You can say the right words, but yet not be effective because there's no conviction. It's not mixed with faith. So we want to help you get jump started. Get in an atmosphere where people know how to pray. Sometimes... Certain things are not taught. They've got to be caught in the spirit. Allow yourself to be exposed to the realm of the supernatural. You believe in God for big things? We are too, together. Let's fight the good fight of faith. And everything that I talked about, the promises that rightfully belongs to you, it first begins with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe this is your first time here. You were invited by a friend or you just passed by and you decided to come in. If you don't have the assurance that if your life were to expire today, that heaven would be your home, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. The Bible says that there is no other name given among men by which we must be saved. It's actually quite simple. All you need to do is believe with all of your heart that Jesus Christ died for the penalty of your sins and on the third day rose again. And the Bible says that when you believe that, you are saved and forgiven of every sin you've ever committed. So today, you can have a fresh start. It's still January and maybe you're not where you need to be in your walk with God. And There's a stirring within your heart and you want to recommit your life. Well, this is the time to do it. The first month of the year. God, I want to get right with you. I haven't been walking in a way that's pleasing to you and I want to... I want to start off right this year. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's you saying, Pastor Wally, I want to have full assurance that I will be forgiven, that I can have a clean slate, I can have a new beginning, please pray for me. If that's you, go ahead and lift up your hands all throughout the sanctuary. You're saying, Pastor Wally, I want to have a fresh start. I want to be forgiven. God bless you. 
God bless you. おはようございます。高一です。土曜日の朝、いかがお過ごしでしょうか。FM コザの前のお花もだいぶいろんなところが咲いてきて、一気に春、ひょっとしたら初夏に向かっているのかもしれないですね。とってもいい朝を沖縄では迎えております。皆さんのお住まいの地域ではどんな朝をお迎えになっていらっしゃいますでしょうか。この朝皆さんにお聞きいただいたメッセージですけれども、パスタウォーリーというハワイの副牧師のメッセージでした。実はずいぶん古いこれメッセージなんですけれども、2年ほど前のメッセージなんですね。2016年の1月にパスタウォーリーがメッセージをされた時のものなんですけれども今年に入ってからこのワード・オブ・ライフのチャーチでは「フォーティ・デイズ・チャレンジ」ということで40日間のそのチャレンジの期間を持っていますけれどもその中でよく言われていることがえまず決心をしましょう。そして決めたことを宣言をしていきましょうそして最後には神の夢に預かりましょうというようなことを私たちは今しているんですけれどもその中でこの今週の放送を用意するにあたってすごく神様は私たち一人一人に伝えたいだろうなと思うようなことが一つ思い浮かんでですねそれは一つは「祈る」ということなんですけどもどんなふうに祈ったらいいのかっていうことをこの朝神様は私たちに詳しく説明をされているなという気がいたします。それからももう一つなんですけれども実はこのどのように祈ってそれが影響を与えていくかというようなことの前にもう一つ1年前なんですけども2017年の1月の時にその私たちの,そのワード・オブ・ライフの主任牧師であるパスタ・アートがメッセージをしたことがあってですねそっちは実は「ファースト・シングス・ファースト」っていうえー、最初にすべきことをしなさいっていうようなメッセージがあるんですけれどもこの2つがこの朝とても大切なのかなと思って皆さんとぜひ共有をしたいと思って、えー、一番のポイントであるどのようにお祈りをしたらいいのか影響のある祈り方はどういう祈り方なのかということについてのメッセージを英語で聞いていただきました。そしてまずその祈り方の前に入る前に「ファースティンスファースト」っていう去年2017年の1月にパスタ・アートがメッセージをしたことなんですけどもこれ日本語で具体的に共有していくと何かというと最初にやるべきことをやる何を私たちがその毎日の生活において最初にやるべきなのかということを実は1年前の1月にパスタートはメッセージをしているんですけどもその中でパスタートは大きなポイントを一つ言ってますねそれは何かというと私たちのその内側に神の御国を置きましょうっていうことです。これが私たちが最初にすべきことだということです。神は最初にその神の宮を置かれました。で、その時にパスタアートが用いた聖句というのは
「信玄」というところが旧約聖書にあるんですけれどもここはもう私たちが毎日を生活する中でとてもどんなように生活をしていったらいいかということがよくよく書かれている部分なんですがそこの「三章」というところの一節から六節まで少し飛びますけれどもこんなふうに書かれています一節と二節にはこんなふうに書かれています。我が子よ私の教えを忘れるな。私の命令に心を止めよう。二節、そうすればあなたに長い日と命の年と平安が増し加えられるというようなことが書かれています。次に、三章の五節と六節にはこういうふうに書かれています。五節にはこういうふうに書かれています。心を尽くして主により頼める。自分の悟りに,悟りに頼るな。あなたの行くところどこにおいても主を認めようそうすれば主はあなたの道をまっすぐにしてくださるというようなことをが書かれていますこれはどういうことかというと私たちが毎日毎日生活をしていく中で私たちのその経験であるとかその考えに基づいて無意識に私たちは行動しているということなんですねその今までの経験値や今までの生きている中で身についてしまったその考えに基づいて無意識に行動しているとではなくて私たちはその神の宮を私たちのその内側にしっかりと置いて神が何を私たちに今させたいのか神が私たちに与えてくださるご計画は何なのか神が私たちに与えてくださる良きことは何なのかということを本当によくよく求めていくことが大切なのかなということです。でその時に私たちがその神が何を私たちに与えたいのか神のご計画は何なのかということを知るために何が大切なのかというとここで祈りが大切なんですということが出てきますそのパスタートがファースシンスファーストっていうこの最初にすべきことをしなさいということをメッセージする1年前にパスタボーリーという副牧師が影響力のあるその力強い祈りというのはどういうものなのかということをメッセージをしてましたでその中で祈ることによって神の約束にアクセスができますよというふうに言っています。神様の約束にアクセスできる方法の一つとしては私たちは祈ることですということです。そしてその私たちの人生とかその毎日の生活に影響を与えることができる祈り方をしなさいねっていうことです。ただただ思いを馳せて祈るそんな時もあります。ただ私たちがその神にアクセスをしてそのこの聖書にはパスタ・オーバリンも言ってましたけれども 8,000 以上の神の祝福の約束が書かれていると言っていますですからその祝福の約束に預かるときにどのようにアクセスをするのかというところがポイントになるのかなという気がいたしますそして一番初めに神様が私たちにその用意をしてくださっているものっていうのはどんなものかというとこんなふうに書かれています。第一コリントの二章の九節、新約聖書になりますけれども、そこにはこんなふうに書かれています。目が見たことのないもの、耳が聞いたことのないもの、そして人の思い浮かんだことのないもの、神を愛する者の,のために、神の育えてくださったものは皆そうである。本当にこの通りだと思います。例えば、目が見たこともないもの、耳が聞いたこともないもの、そしてそして私たち一人の心の中に
思い浮かんだことのないものそんなようなことを神は私たち一人一人のために用意してくださってますよと言っています。例えば私の自分の人生を振り返ってみるとしたら今この沖縄にいること自体が20代30代の私の中では思い浮かんだようなことではないんですね。20代30代は私は東京の方に住んでいてその全く違う仕事をしていましたどんな仕事をしていたかというとみずほ銀行というところがあるんですけれどもそこのグループの中に UC カードっていうクレジットカードの会社がありますでそこの会社で20代前半から30代の終わりまで働いていましたでその時は全く沖縄に移り住んで自分で仕事をやりそしてさらには最後に牧師になるなんていうことは全く考えもしていませんでしたただただその融資カードをやめる時もただただ神様がもうこいつその仕事は終わりですよって神様が私に聖書を通して語りかけたんですねその聖書の箇所というのはどこかというとイサクという人物が旧約聖書の本当に初めの方に出てきますアブラハムの息子ですでアブラハムに神はこういうふうに言いましたお前の一番大切な一人息子のイサクを私に捧ぎなさい山の上に登って生ける生贄として私に捧げなさいと言ってアブラハムは山の上に上がってイサクを本当にほふって神に捧げようとしましたその時にもちろん神様は良き神ですからそんなようなことはさせないんですけれどもここを読んだ時に神様は私に尋ねましたその時「こいつお前にとって今最も大事なものは何か?」って言われた時に「実は神様ではなかったんですねその当時私は自分の仕事が本当に一番大切でした」でその時に「神様にもう仕事を辞めて私のところに来なさい」っていうふうに言われましたそれでその仕事を辞めて全く次の仕事を決めずにハワイの母教会のボランティアに行きました帰ってきてもなかなか仕事も決まらずその中で神様が与えてくださった、まあ、仕事がデューティーフリーという免税店の仕事でしたそしてその仕事をしている中にその DFS という会社が沖縄にお店を作るからお手伝いに行きなさいということでお手伝いに来てその中で転勤をして今沖縄に来てますですから本当に私たちが考えているようなことをはるかに超えて私たちの神は神のごご計画をご用意されています39歳でその融資カードを辞めるときにそれから20年15年15年ぐらいですかねたった今沖縄の地で牧師をしているなんていうことは思いもよりませんでしたではそれが何によってもたらされたかというとやはりこれは日々の祈りかっこよく日々の祈りって言ってますけれども時には祈らなかったりとか本当に簡単な祈りで済ましてしまったりした時もあります。でこの「神のご計画が成し遂げられることについて「イザヤ書」の46章の10節にはこういうふうに書かれています。私は終わりのことを初めから告げまだなされていないことを昔から告げ
私の計りごとは成就し私の望む,方望む事柄をすべて成し遂げようというこれが神様の思いでありその言葉でありますそしてその中で毎日毎日私たちが生きていく中で本当に大変なことがいっぱいあると思います今日のパスタオーリーも言ってましたけれども経済的な厳しい時期それから時によっては病を背負ってしまう病が身の回りにあるそれから家族の不仲が起きてしまう地域との結びつきが薄れてしまうというようなことが起きてしまうかもしれません。特に病のことについてパスタウォーリーは一つの聖句を使っていました私たちはよく神を信じる者が聖書を読んだ時にイエス・キリストのその打ち傷によって私たちは癒されたという聖句があるんですけれどもこの朝パスタウォーリーはマタイによる福音書の8章の17節を用いていましたそこにはこういうふうに書かれていますこれは預言者イザヤを通して言われたことが上手するためであった彼が私たちの患いを引き受け身に引き受け私たちの病を背負ったというふうに書かれています私たちの病が癒されるという聖句は一箇所だけではないということですそして私たちがその祈りの中で何がポイントなのかというとアブラハムが私たち一人一人に与えてくださった神の約束と同じようにその約束というのは私たちにも与えられていますのでその約束をしっかりと手の中に握ることが大切であるということですそしてその神の約束を自分の手の中に持ったら今回の40日の挑戦と一緒なんですけれどもその聖書に書かれている神の約束を宣言するということが大切です。本当に私たちの宣言する言葉というのは力強くて本当に大切なその行動です。これはなぜかというとヨハネの一章の一節に神は言葉であったということはあります。でですすののの私たちの言葉というのはとっても大切ですなのでその私たちがしゃべるその言葉を使って神の約束を宣言していかなくてはいけないということですただしパスタウォーリーも言ってますけれどもその約束だとか祝福だとかというのを私たちの敵が来て壊して取り去ろうとします。例えば経済的な厳しい状況が続いてて一向に良くならない病にかかっているけれども全然良くならない治らないなんでだろうその時に私たちがぜひ手に持っていたい御言葉はこれですダニエル書の10章の12節にこういうふうに書かれています神の前でへりくだろうと決めたその初めの日からあなたの言葉は聞かれているからだ私が来たのはあなたの言葉のためだ個人的にはすげえなーって今回この土曜日の番組を放送するにあたっていろいろなことを用意しているときに思いましたすごいと思いません私たちが神の前でへりくだろうと自分の人生を明け渡そうと決めたああ神様あなたが私たちの神ですと決めてそしてああ神様あなたに使えますあなたの前に私の人生を明け渡しますって決めたその日から私たちが神様こうしてください山をよくしてください経済を立て直してくださいより良い祝福を与えてくださいという私たちが祈った言葉っていうのは聞かれているというふうに聖書に書かれているんですね
そしてその私たちの神が私たちのところに来てくださったのはあなたの言葉のためだというふうに言っているんですよ。私たちがその発した言葉のために神は私たちのところに来てくださるということです。すごいですよね。なので私たちはその言葉を用いて本当に祈りをしなくてはいけないということです。そしてじゃあ祈りについては一つだけ皆さんと共有をしてみたいと思います。第一ヨハネの五章の十四節にはこういうふうに書かれています。何事でも神の御心にかなう願いをするなら、あ神はその願いを聞いてくださるということ。これこそ神に対する私たちの確信です。例えば私の行いがなんかあんまり良くないから神様は願いを聞いてくださらないのかな私の行いが良くないから自分の病気が良くならないのかなというふうに疑いは持たないでください。神の御心にかなう願いをということについてこの1週間よくよく私は思いを巡らしましたけれども。神の御心にかなうということは繁栄に預かるとか病が癒されるということは神の御心であるということです。ですから本当に切にそこを望んで求めていくことが大切なのかなというふうに思います。そして祈って祈って祈って一回だけで聞かれる祈りもあります。そして長長く長く時間をかけて祈っていくこともあったりもしますそして例えば第一列王記の18章の41節にはこんなことが書かれていますそれからエリアはアハブに行った登って行って飲み食いしなさい激しい大雨の音がするからこれどういうことかというとこの時代数年間の干ばつがあってその時に雨が非常に必要だっていうふうに思っていたんですねでその時に預言者のエリアはずっと祈っていましたでずっと祈っている中で神が預言者エリアを通じて激しい大雨の音がするからということを言っていますこれが私たちが祈った時の神様からの回答です。応答であります。私たちの人生に神は大雨を降らせてくださいます。時には聖書では後の雨、収穫の雨を降らすというふうに言ってくださいます。ですので、最後にまとめさせていただくと、私たちがどのように祈ったらいいのかということについては、本当に聖書に書いてある8000以上の祝福の約束を手に握って口で告白していくそして決して私たちはその祈っていることを諦めないということが大切ですそれについて神は必ず私たちにその回答をくださいますですので合わせて毎日毎日個人的に聖書を読んでいくリボーションの時間がとっても大切です。神は聖書を通じて私たちにそのご計画を明らかにされます。ですので飛び出す絵本のように聖句が飛び出してきたらそれが私たちに影響を与えるその御言葉だというふうに思ってもいただいても時にはいいかもしれませんなので聖書を読み本当に祈り込んでいくという生活がとっても大切なのかなというふうに今の時期に思います一言お祈りいたします
。愛する天皇お父様、この朝をありがとうございます。次の一週間、私たち、このラジオを聞いているもの、見ているもの、一人一人の上にあなたの豊かな恵みがありますように。あなたの大いなる憐れみの中に生きることができますように。主よ、どうぞ私たち一人一人の日々の中に。豊かな豊かな恵みと健やかな健康と大いなる経済を与えてくださいますように次の1週間何一つ災いが来ることなくその地境が広がり苦しみに遭わず良きことだけで満たされることを宣言してイエス・キリストの皆によってお祈りいたしますアメン来月はまたゲストをお迎えしての時があるかもしれませんが楽しみにお聞きくださいそれではまた来週の土曜日にお会いできることを楽しみにして。May God bless you.